we all tell them. Little white lies, elaborate stories, sometimes even whoppers that would make Pinocchio blush. But have you ever stopped to wonder why? Tonight, we delve into the murky depths of human deception. We're going to unravel the complex psychology of lies, the hidden motivations that drive people to spin webs of deceit. Forget polygraphs and truth serums. We're going to expose the secrets professional lie catchers use to spot deception. Learn to read the subtle cues the body language tells, the micro-expressions that betray a liar's true intentions. Is your partner hiding something? Is your friend being completely honest? By the end of this video, you'll be a human lie detector, ready to uncover the truth hiding in plain sight. So, are you ready to peel back the layers of deception? Then hit that subscribe button and join us on this journey into the psychology of lies. Welcome to the Abyss of Wisdom. Why do people lie? Did you know studies suggest we tell an average of one to two lies every single day? Shocking, right? But think about it. How often do you fudge the truth? Just a tad to avoid conflict? Or maybe embellish a story to sound more interesting? The truth is, lying is woven into the fabric of our social interactions. But it's not always harmless. Sometimes those lies stem from deeper psychological needs. We might lie to protect ourselves, to save face, or even to avoid punishment. Self-preservation is a primal instinct, and sometimes a little white lie can feel like the safest option. Maybe you call in sick to work because you're actually burnt out and need a mental health day. Perhaps you tell your friend their haircut looks great, even though it's a bit unusual, because you don't want to hurt their feelings. But lying isn't always about ourselves. Sometimes we bend the truth to maintain social harmony. We might tell a white lie to avoid conflict, or maybe even to protect someone else's feelings. Imagine your friend is having a rough day and confides in you about a silly mistake they made. You might downplay it or even offer a playful white lie to make them feel better. There's a fine line though. These social lubricants can help interactions run smoothly, but be aware of when a white lie starts to become manipulation. Someone who consistently uses deception to get what they want, regardless of the consequences, is a different story altogether. Not all lies are created equal. There's a spectrum, from the occasional white lie meant to spare someone's feelings to the elaborate fabrications designed to deceive. But regardless of the type, understanding the reasons behind the lie can be the key to uncovering the truth. The science of lying. Can science really pierce the veil of deception and expose a liar? Believe it or not, there's a fascinating battle happening right behind our foreheads. Every time someone fibs, decades of research have shed light on the inner workings of a lying brain. It turns out, honesty is the default setting. Telling the truth requires minimal effort, but deception is a cognitive workout. When we lie, a critical area called the prefrontal cortex kicks into high gear. This region is responsible for planning, problem solving, and inhibiting our usual truthful responses. Think of it like a conductor in an orchestra. The prefrontal cortex has to juggle multiple tasks, fabricating a story, keeping track of the truth we're trying to hide, and trying to appear believable. It also needs to coordinate with other brain regions to ensure our story is consistent and our body language doesn't betray us. Studies using functional MRI scans have shown a fascinating dance of activity during deception. The prefrontal cortex lights up as it works over time. Meanwhile, the amygdala, which is linked to emotions like fear and anxiety, might also become active. If someone feels guilty or nervous about lying, the amygdala can trigger a fight or 
flight response, leading to physiological changes. This is where the lie detection technology comes in. While not foolproof, tools like polygraphs and functional MRI scans can measure these physiological changes, like a slight increase in heart rate or sweat production. The idea is that someone who's lying will experience more anxiety and these changes will be reflected in the data. It's important to remember, however, that these technologies have limitations. Certain individuals can control their physiological responses, making them unreliable indicators of deception. Furthermore, external factors like stress or lack of sleep can also trigger similar changes. So, while there's no magic lie detector, understanding the science behind deception can be a valuable tool. By recognizing the increased activity in the prefrontal cortex and the potential role of the amygdala, we gain insight into the mental strain associated with lying. This knowledge, coupled with other behavioral clues, can help us become more discerning when faced with potential deception. Body language and nonverbal cues of deception, they say the eyes are the window to the soul. But did you know? they can also be a window to a lie, while avoiding eye contact can be a sign of deception. It's important to remember, not everyone who looks away is lying. Cultural background and personality can also play a role. For instance, in some cultures, prolonged eye contact is considered disrespectful, so avoiding it wouldn't necessarily indicate deception. However, there are some general eye behaviors to watch for. Someone who glances up and to the left might be trying to access their memory, while looking down and to the right might signal they're constructing a lie. Of course, these are not definitive signs, and it's important to consider the context. Another nonverbal cue to be aware of is increased blinking. This rapid blinking can be a sign of nervousness or anxiety which could stem from lying. Our bodies often speak louder than words. Fidgeting, like playing with your hair or constantly adjusting your clothes, can signal nervousness or an attempt to relieve tension caused by lying. Likewise, self-touch, behaviors like lip biting or nose touching, can indicate discomfort or an attempt to self-soothe during deception. It's important to remember, however, that not all fidgeting or self-touching is a lie. People with a DHD may fidget naturally, and some cultures have specific greetings that involve touching. The key is to look for clusters of these nonverbal cues. If someone is avoiding eye contact, fidgeting excessively and exhibiting changes in their usual speech patterns, it might be a cause for concern. Remember, nonverbal communication is complex and nuanced. Cultural background, personality, and even the situation itself can influence these cues. Becoming a body language expert takes time and practice. But by familiarizing yourself with these signals and observing behavior in context, you can become more adept at spotting potential deception. Micro-expressions as clues. Imagine being able to spot a lie in a fleeting flicker across a face, a subtle twitch that betrays the hidden truth. Well, that's the power of micro-expressions. These micro-expressions are involuntary facial changes that last a fraction of a second, like a lightning strike of emotion. They can reveal a person's true feelings, even if they're trying to hide them. A flash of anger might manifest as a narrowed gaze and a tightened jaw. A flicker of fear could be a bitten lip or a widening of the eyes. Contempt might show as a raised upper lip and a slight nose wrinkle. These fleeting expressions can be a goldmine for those who know how to read them. While Paul Ekman, 
a pioneer in the field of microexpressions, identified seven universal emotions, anger, contempt, disgust, fear, happiness, sadness, and surprise. It's important to remember that microexpressions can be subjective and vary in intensity. The same basic expression can have different meanings depending on the context. For instance, a narrowed gaze and a tightened jaw could signal anger during a disagreement. But that same expression might appear momentarily on an athlete's face during intense concentration. Furthermore, micro-expressions are just one piece of the puzzle. Relying solely on them to detect deception can be misleading. That's why it's crucial to consider the context of the situation, the person's baseline facial expressions, and any accompanying verbal and non-verbal cues. So, how can you train yourself to recognize these fleeting expressions? Here are some practical tips. Educate yourself. Familiarize yourself with the different micro-expressions and their corresponding emotions. There are many resources available online and in libraries, including books and video tutorials by Paul Ekman and other experts. Watch closely. Pay attention to people's faces during conversations, particularly when emotions are likely to be heightened. Focus on subtle changes around the eyes, mouth, and brow. Baseline matters. Observe a person's baseline facial expressions when they're relaxed and comfortable. This will help you distinguish between their usual expressions and potential micro-expressions. Context is key. Don't jump to conclusions based solely on a micro-expression. Consider the situation, the conversation, and any other nonverbal cues to understand the full picture. Becoming a micro-expression master takes time and dedication. But by following these tips and practicing regularly, you can improve your ability to recognize these fleeting emotional leaks. Remember, micro-expressions are a valuable tool for understanding human emotions but they should be used in conjunction with other observations for a more accurate picture. Detecting deception in relationships. Now, let's hit a little closer to home. Deception can be especially damaging in our most important relationships, where trust is the foundation. Have you ever suspected your partner of hiding something? Maybe a white lie about a night out with friends? or a bigger secret that shakes your trust to the core? Deception in relationships can stem from a variety of fears and insecurities. Sometimes it's a fear of conflict. Afraid a truthful answer might lead to a fight. Perhaps there's a fear of disappointing your partner, or maybe a deeper issue like low self-esteem or a past betrayal that makes honesty difficult. But those little lies no matter the reason, can snowball. Each deception, big or small, erodes trust and creates a distance that's hard to bridge. So how do we navigate this tricky terrain? The answer isn't about becoming a lie detection expert or resorting to accusations. The key lies in cultivating open communication. Create a safe space where both partners feel comfortable expressing themselves honestly, even when it's difficult. This means being an active listener, showing empathy and understanding and avoiding interrupting or judging. It's also important to be honest with yourself. Are there things you might be hiding from your partner? Building trust is a two-way street and consistent honesty, even about the tough stuff, is essential. Remember, a healthy relationship thrives on transparency and mutual respect. Deception, on the other hand, breeds suspicion and resentment. If you suspect your partner is being dishonest, address it calmly and directly. Focus on how their actions make you feel and express your desire for a more open and trusting relationship. 
It's important to be prepared for the possibility that the truth might be difficult to hear. But open communication, even in the face of uncomfortable truths, is the foundation for rebuilding trust and strengthening your relationship. Ultimately, while you can't control someone's actions, by prioritizing honesty in your own communication and fostering a trusting environment, you take a crucial step towards creating a healthy and fulfilling relationship techniques for catching a liar. So, you want to separate truth from fiction? While some techniques are reserved for trained professionals like detectives and psychologists, there are ways to become a better lie detector in your daily life. First, understand that catching a liar is about recognizing patterns, not relying on a single red flag. Professionals often use a technique called behavioral baseline. This involves establishing how someone typically behaves when telling the truth. Are they usually animated with hand gestures? Do they maintain steady eye contact? Observing these baselines allows you to spot deviations that might occur when they're lying. Another technique is active listening. Pay close attention to details in their story. Not just the words, but how they say them. Professionals might use open-ended questions to encourage elaboration and see if the story remains consistent. Inconsistencies can be a big red flag. Notice if their story changes over time or if they get flustered and provide vague details when pressed for specifics. Remember, body language can also be revealing, but it should be interpreted with caution. While increased fidgeting, nervous laughter, or changes in facial expressions can be signs of deception, they could also stem from anxiety unrelated to lying. It's important to remember these techniques are best used in conjunction with good communication. Instead of accusing someone of lying, try asking clarifying questions and expressing your concerns in a calm and level-headed way. Acknowledge their feelings and let them know you're open to hearing the truth. Sometimes, people lie because they fear the consequences of honesty. By creating a safe space for open communication, you increase the chances of getting to the truth. The truth is always worth pursuing. But remember, catching a liar isn't about winning an argument. It's about understanding the situation and fostering trust. If a lie is revealed, address it directly, but also focus on moving forward together. While these techniques can be helpful, it's important to manage your expectations. Professional lie detectors like polygraphs have limitations, and even the most skilled interrogators can be fooled. Deception is a complex human behavior, and there's no foolproof way to detect a lie every single time. So, we've peeled back the layers of deception, explored the science behind lying, and learned to spot the subtle cues that can betray a liar. Remember, lying is a complex human behavior. There's no magic bullet for detecting deception, but by understanding the motivations behind lies, recognizing nonverbal cues, and prioritizing open communication, you can become a more discerning individual. The truth is always worth pursuing. But the question remains, are you ready to confront the lies you might uncover? So, we've peeled back the layers of deception explored the science behind lying, and learned to spot the subtle cues that can betray a liar. Like this video, if you learn something new about deception, we want to hear from you. Share your experiences with lying in the comments below, and for more dramatic explorations of human behavior, don't forget to subscribe.